Hey, you guys. It's Ashante from Tidbits for Women and from From Him Through Me Tees. Sorry, I'm trying to get this. I guess this is fine. It's, it's not really dark in here, but my camera doesn't seem to be the best. Let me. I don't know. Hopefully, this will be okay. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, first, I just want to start by saying a small prayer. Um, I'm praying that this video touches people. I pray that um, it brings healing, it brings understanding. I pray that it brings awareness. And um, I pray that people are able to see a bigger picture when they um, see these videos. And um, so that that's my prayer that I just want to send out there to the Most High. And... Um, Sorry, I'm still trying to adjust this. Okay, so um, like I said, um, I am the founder and author, co-author and co-founder of Tibbets for Women, and uh, my partner is in Tamara Newton. We've been friends since elementary school, and um, we kind of came together after we had a vision, um, which led us to believing that Tibbets for Women was our purpose. And that is bringing small bits of information to women to make them whole. So we like to address physical, mental, spiritual, and financial, um, like the whole person. And we really do emphasize the spiritual because we feel like we're spiritual beings, but we are having a natural experience. But that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> but um, so anyway. So for this month, it's been really heavy on my heart to kind of talk about abuse, um, partly because I went through abuse and then also I have seen many people going around um, experiencing abuse like around me big time. Um, and it's really heavy on my heart because what I know for a fact is that when you're abused, you don't understand your worth. And it's really hurtful to know that people are out there, which I was one of those people that did not understand like how valuable I truly am. And we live in society right now that life is not of value unless you are providing something for someone else. That's the only way. And then once you're unable to provide, then you're useless. And that is unfortunately the society we live in. And um, it, it's really sad. So the first part of the abuse series, like I said before, Natamra is going to be doing more of the writing, the blog side of everything. So if you guys check out um, tibbetsforwomen.com, the website, we'll have blogs up there. And then um, I'll be doing more of the video, the vlogs. And so we're going to kind of chunk this because it's such a big, humongous topic and it goes way deeper than I know a lot of people are like, um, they just think of hitting when they think of abuse, but it goes so much deeper than that. And it's so rooted in families and it's so rooted. It, it's just really deep. And people often think that abuse just is with um, romantic relationships, but that's not true. So people need to know that. So our first part is I want to break down like what are what are common abusive personality traits or like what does it look like? And I'm talking I'm not talking about the abuser right now, but the abusee. So that's the first thing I want to hit on. And I know this is tidbit, so I'm going to try to make it as short as I can. But I just really want to hit on this. And like I said, I'm not a professional. I... I'm doing research and um, I'm basing things off of experiences and, um, you know, it's not a one shoe fits all type of situation. So I don't, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not saying everything's across the board. So with that being said, um, I'm going to start with some of the characteristic traits of an abusee. And I have been an abusee. So i um, there's a lot of them. There's like 17, but there's like, let me see, one, two, like six that I just really want to point out and kind of elaborate on. So some of these are the intense need for love and affection, low self-esteem, 
drug or alcohol dependence. I'm kind of looking at my notes, guys, so let's keep looking back and forth. Um, a background evol involving physical, emotional, or sexual abuse. Um, adult children of alcoholics and addicts. So many times if you've grown, grown up in a household where there's been an addict, um, or alcoholic, which is a, a, just a form of addiction to alcohol, um, that can be a trait. Um, codependent personality, which kind of ties in with the intense need for love and affection. And then that, um, in parentheses, I would say that would be like love addiction. This is something I've never even heard of until I started researching this. Love addiction. And wait till I dig in on that one. Um, another one I want to hit on is a strong need for a relationship to validate them. And then the last one I really want to hit on is the inability to set and enforce interpersonal boundaries. So these are the main like six I want to talk about. It's a big, long list, but these were the six that I can kind of relate to. Um, yeah, pretty much all of them I can relate to. So I just want to start with that. Um, so love addiction, this is something I never even heard of. And I'm going to tell you about my culture and my family background. So I grew up like old school. So people, things would go on in the family, right? Nobody would talk about it. I'm talking about we were raised, whatever goes on in this house stays in this house, no matter how crazy it was. Now, mind you, I'm pretty sure that my parents also were taught that, and so they kind of taught that to us. So we're talking about a couple generations of people being like, you keep your mouth shut, you know, no matter what's going on here. You just keep your mouth shut, right? 120, really, Durant? <laughs> yes, I'm the oldest of nine siblings. But anyway, so... <laughs> um, Literally, that is the environment I grew up in. And my grandma, which would be my dad's mom, she had that same mentality. So I'm sure she passed that on to her, my dad and his siblings, right? So it's all kind of crazy stuff going on in the family. And guess what happens? It gets swept underneath the rug. You're not allowed to talk about it. You're not allowed to say how you feel, especially as a child growing up. It, we had, like, the motto was you stay in the child's place. You're not allowed to give your feedback, not allowed to say, oh, I'm feeling hurt. Oh, you hurt me. Oh, oh, you know, what about this? Just to have a healthy dialogue. You know what I mean? You can have a healthy dialogue even as a child and not be disrespectful. But, it, you know, it that is the environment I grew up in. So all kind of stuff was going on in the house. Um, and I'm sure this happened in my father's house. And nobody talks about it. You're not allowed to say anything. Okay? So here's one thing about it. When you're in these environments and these things are going on, especially as a child, they make soul deposits. So you are getting a callus on yourself because you're not able to clean it up. When you speak about things and you talk about things and you're able to address things, that is a cleansing for your soul. It is a cleansing for you. When you're not allowed to do that for years at a time, you it you build a callus and you don't even know how to process that stuff. You don't know what to do. You carry around those same the the things the way things were handled then. You kind of that's how you operate. You learn how to operate, and usually it's not in a healthy way. And so that's like kind of a background of what was going on. Just um a small amount i'll keep giving details but i just want to hit on these things i don't want to keep you guys for too long so let's talk about love addiction or the intense need for love and affection the intense need for it so not just the basics it's intense like i have to have it right so first of all let's talk about addictions just really quick so addictions, people develop them to shield themselves from something that has happened. Like, and it's usually whatever has happened, it's painful. So therefore, they create an addiction to kind of numb that pain, but the pain never goes away. It's like a toothache. 
that toothache is there. You might take a little Motrin or a little something, you know, and it'll take it away for a moment and then it comes back because you're not getting to the root of the problem. So people develop these addictions to help numb things, right? So when we're talking about love addiction, um, so love addicts spend much time and effort on a person to whom they're addicted to. Okay, so this doesn't have to be a romantic thing. Hey, T. <laughs> um, it doesn't have to be a romantic thing or a romantic person, first of all. Okay. They find value in another person. Hey, Duran. <laughs> in another person more than they value themselves. So that's problem number one. <laughs> okay. So basically, they are putting this person up on a pedestal, and this person means more to them than they mean to their own selves, okay? Some of the behaviors that result in love addicts are neglecting the care of themselves in different types of ways, um, and they just, I mean, they just neglect themselves. And I mean, I could see that easily happening because if you value someone else more than you value yourself, then how could you take care of yourself? Okay. And like I said, love addiction doesn't necessarily pertain to a romantic. It could be a friendship that happens. So um, you can be addicted to your friends, your children, your pastor, whoever. Okay. So it's there. You're just looking for this love from someone else, basically. So people become love addicts due to their past history of abandonment from their primary caregivers. And all these these different um, characteristics or situations, when I was writing my notes, I put underneath childhood, childhood, childhood. Because, oh my gosh, all this is stemming from childhood. People are not getting what they need as when they're growing up. Because what's happening is hurt people are getting with hurt people and they're creating more hurt people because nobody's addressing the problem. Okay. And of course, you know, they didn't get the validation and the love that they needed as kids. So they go seek that in whoever they can find it in. And that's where the love um, addiction comes from. So that was the first, um, that was the first characteristic. Um, and I'm hitting on these real quick because I know this would take forever, <laughs> really, if I went through everything line by line. Um, and then the next thing, low self-esteem. Low self-esteem, when I was looking that up and researching it, I put childhood because guess what? Your self-esteem gets developed and nurtured as a child. And so your self-esteem is your personal worth. How competent you think you are, how efficient you think you are. And um, the first major component of self esteem, like I said, is your personal worth. And are, do you feel like you're worthy of the respect? And that, that's another thing, like with the sex addict and then the self esteem. Again, you don't look at yourself of value, you don't see yourself um, worthy of, you know. Let's see. How do I want to say this? You don't see your, you don't value yourself pretty much. Okay. And then inter, interpersonal boundaries is the next one I want to talk about. So it's the limits you set on a behavior of others. So, oh man. Okay. So think about it. If you're being abused, have you been able to set those boundaries of whoever's abusing you and be like, no. I'm not about to, you know what I mean? I'm not about to accept this. No, you're not going to treat me like this. No, you're not. You're definitely not going to lay your hands on me. No, their self-esteem is shot. Everything's, you know, shot. They have not been able to develop. First of all, they have not been able to see themselves of value. So, I mean, right there, that automatically lets people think that they can just do whatever. And they, they exuberate that like that comes off off of them and so people know that and so putting up those boundaries 
people have not been able to do that. And I am one of those people. I, um, growing up, was trying to seek that love and validation. And um, I would not, I, I don't think I got it as a child as I should have. And, yep, you're right, Duran. Your parents and the closest to you, yes, they do give you your sense of worth. And when you don't get that, you go seek for it. Some, you go seek elsewhere for it. And in the in the meantime, you could be a little punch bag in the process of trying to seek that because you have not been able to set boundaries. And because, like you said, stemming from those around you that love you, haven't been like, look, you know what? You are one of us and we love you and people aren't going to get to treat you in any kind of way because you are somebody. You are worth so much more. You are not going to tolerate this. Like, I tell my daughters, I don't play. Like, no, look, you got to see value in yourself, okay? And and I, I'm really going to hit on where that value comes from. That's going to be a whole nother t- topic in the spiritual realm. But just speaking, phys- uh, you know, here physically, like, they're just not getting that. And so they can't set those boundaries. So people can do whatever they want. They can say whatever you want. Um, you know what I mean? They can just do whatever. Duran, I love your interaction today. <laughs> yep, you're right. If you don't value yourself, you do feel worthless. It's just like a vicious cycle. And therefore, you'll be with somebody, first of all, that will treat you good from the jump. And then, you know, oh, you know, that's a game. That's a whole nother. I can't wait to talk about the abusers. But, um... <laughs> oh, thank you, Duran. <laughs> Duran said I came through like a trooper. Duran's one of my um, lifelong friends, too. We've been friends for a long time. And uh, he saw a lot of what I went through, especially in high school. I ended up leaving my household at the age of 16 and moving in with my grandma because um, the abuse just got too heavy there. So he got to see a lot of the stuff that I went through, some crazy stuff. So... Yes, Duran. Thank you. <laughs> but I'm trying to share this so people, you know, can reflect and try to, you know, reflect on where this is coming from. Because, like I said, a lot of people grow up in these environments where you're not allowed to talk about these things. And even if you are, people don't even know where to begin to talk. So, um, all right. So some signs of some un- unhealthy interpersonal boundaries. I just want to hit on that really quick. And then, I don't know, I don't have that much left. Um, There's a bunch of those too, but I'm just going to share a couple. So, not noticing when someone else displays inappropriate boundaries. Not noticing when someone invades your boundaries. Because you don't have any boundaries up, so you're not going to notice. Allowing someone to take as much as they can from you. Letting others direct your life. Letting others describe your reality. Letting others define you. Oh my gosh. Believing others can anticipate your needs and expecting others to fill your needs automatically. Oh man, like I can relate to a lot of these. (laughs) Falling apart so someone will take care of you. Self abuse, sexual and physical abuse, and food and chemical abuse. So those are just a few of signs of unhealthy interpersonal boundaries. That's like just a few. And I could relate to probably about half of those. Let me see, I probably read off what, 10? I could probably relate to about five or six of those. I didn't learn how to put up the boundaries because I didn't get what I needed growing up, unfortunately. Oh, thanks, T. (laughs) Um, And so, Oh, yes, Miss Roz. Oh, speaking of Roz. Okay, Roz is my mom, you guys. Sorry, this is a side note. And it ties in with abuse. So let me tell you another reason why I'm so passionate about this. My mom was in an abusive relationship with my dad, okay? Now, my dad's real smooth with it. And I don't, you know, whoever wants to throw this out there, that's okay. Um... So my dad's a professional man. I'm not going to knock that. He worked. Not going to knock that. He provided for the family. It was nine of us, nine kids. 
um, and all that, right? But he was abusive. And that's just period, point blank. And he was, like I said, smooth with it. So he, you know, come, you know, knock her right in front of us or anything like that. He would, he would be real slick with it, right? He's, he's a thinker, so manipulator. So, you know what I mean? He could He could be slick with it. So why I'm so passionate about abuse and seeing women in abusive relationships and men, I don't care, like whoever, it's whoever, right? Why I'm so passionate about it? Because like I watched my mom do it until she died, literally at 45. So it wasn't like she, you know what I mean, was old and gray. And... She did die of cancer, which I believe was stress induced, which I believe the stress came from all the abuse and all the things she was going through. And I believe that the Most High had to take her because that was the only way she was going to be able to get out. She wasn't strong enough to get out on her own because she had been beat up so long. And when I say beat up, I'm not just talking physically because she, you know what I mean? My mom, she still look good. Like she, she ain't walk around black eyes and things like that. But she had been beat up emotionally so badly that I feel like that was the only way she was going to be able to go uh, get out of the situation, which is so sad. And at 16, I personally just couldn't take it anymore. And I left, you know what I mean? But she did not have that strength. But I want you guys to know you do have that strength. You can get out. You don't have to. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not just talking about romantic relationships. I'm not talking about romantic relationships all the way. It's anybody. It could be your family, your brother, your sister, your friend, whoever is not uplifting you, trying to encourage you. And I'm not talking about in words, but in actions alike, like both ways. If they are tearing you down, doing the opposite of those things, it's time for you to go. Bye. You know what I mean? Like, that's where those boundaries, those interpersonal boundaries have to be set. But they can only be set when you find value in yourself. That is the only way that's going to work. And you have to know that you're worth something. You have to know that. You have to. And if you see, if you've heard anything that I said, like I really just skim, skim the surface on this stuff because it's so deep. Like we could literally go months into this for real. If you see some of these traits in yourself or even if you've been in a situation or whatever it is, if you're in one right now, like you can get out. You can. You've got to say, I was created for something. You're not just here for nothing. You are not here to be anybody's punching bag. You are not. So you, it's time for you to sit back and be like, well, dang. Well, why am I here? What is my purpose? You were created for something. You're not here just to be wandering the earth every day. Just, you know what I mean? Like you're here for something. So these are the things we got to think about, man. We got to put value, man. I'm telling you, we live in society. People don't care about people. People are not checking up on nobody. People are not, oh, you're not meeting my needs. So I'm brushing you off. You're not doing this. Oh, you didn't get this. Man, and I'm, okay, I'm guilty of this. So I can, I, I can talk about, it. yes, mental and psychological abuse. Yes, it can be worse than physical. It can. They all bad, honestly. But, like, man, people have got to know their worth. This is where all this is stemming from. This is where all this is stemming from. Because I like it, like I said, hurt people are getting with hurt people. My husband and I were just talking about this last night. I said, I've never been in a healthy relationship except for my husband. <laughs> And he's like, I've never been in a healthy relationship either. It's crazy. <laughs> so this is why I'm doing this now. This is why I speak to my kids now. Yes, they know exactly how I grew up. I am I going to hide that. I hated my mom hid stuff from me. You know what I mean? 
didn't tell me. Just wouldn't say anything. You know what I mean? Like, I hated that because I had to learn stuff the hard way. Okay, we're going we're gonna to all make our choices and decisions, right? Because we were created with the power of choice, right? We're not robots. So, why not provide the information, especially to our children or whoever you're working with, whoever's around me, you know what I mean? I'll provide that information. Kate, I don't know if you're still there. Kayla knows she's my, uh, I work with her. <laughs> I'll tell her all about all kinds of foods and everything, you know, all kinds of stuff. You know, I share the information as I get it, you know, because I'm passionate about that. Because it's like, why let people go in blind when you can go in and provide information for them? You know what I mean? And so if you've gone through something, part of the reason why you're going through one reason, so you can share. <laughs> The other reason is the most high wants to show his strength in your life. But, you know, like I said, we're going to get on that later. But um, so that's that's the reason why I'm so passionate about it, because I've watched I've been I watched my mom be abused and then we were abused as siblings. And then um, I dated abusers in a sense, you know what I mean? Like they weren't you know, like physically abuse, abusing me, but controlling. They had some of those traits, you know what I mean? And then I didn't set interpersonal boundaries, so I stayed with folks way too long. Like, they had crossed way too many lines. <laughs> Even with friendships, people didn't cross way too many lines, but I had that need, like, inside of me. Like, I just longed for, in elementary, I longed for friendship. Like, I really wanted people to really accept me and I really want to accept people like and I hate that some of my um experiences have kind of calloused me to that like I wish I could get back to that I mean I know I can that loving person but you know you put up this wall kind of you kind of like uh you know Ooh, wait hold on so yeah I don't know how long I've been out here but I just you know, that's why I'm so passionate. And then I'm seeing other people around me that are in abusive relationships and they're letting it go on. I mean, for years, just like my mom, for years, for years until it took her out. I'm telling you that stuff will take you out. I'm telling you, I, you, you will go <laughs> like for real. Like I, I, I've seen it firsthand. You, you can die from it. Like, that's the ultimate, you know, exit strategy. But why do that? Why not stay here and live out your purpose? You know what I mean? Why not? That's That was the whole point of why you were created in the first place. Why let something take you out like that? Why? Are you not worth more than that? I'm telling you, you are. And you start telling yourself you are until you believe it. <laughs> Start walking in that, man. We're just getting beat up here. We're getting beat up. And nobody's doing anything about it, it seems like. And so that's why I'm really passionate about this. So, yep, acceptance. Acceptance. But the thing is, let me tell you. Sometimes being who you are, walking in your purpose is not always you're not gonna always be accepted that's why you gotta get the lord will give you exactly who you need in your life that will accept you be there for you be you know what i mean it, it could be one person and that's all right that's all you need i mean just to keep it real it's, that's really i mean you know what i mean like you just got to think of yourself as your creator thinks of you. And that's the problem, man. We we are letting folks and now our creator not doing a daggone thing, not breathing a breath of life. A, a, ain't in the lick of the snake. We letting them dictate our worth. So that's where my passion and drive is coming from, y'all. I mean, it's coming from some real, a real place. So, so that's my part one. <laughs> oh man.
And that's my part one. I appreciate you guys joining in. And, um, you know, I got a message last night. It was so encouraging, you know. And we're going to address this on people that are friends of the person that's being abused. You know, don't don't let go of them. Don't let go. And I know it gets frustrating and hard. But that's, yeah, fake it till you make it. Hmm. You better speak that thing. Write it down. Put it on the, what, every morning you wake up, it's on your mirror. Whatever you got to do. You have to. You have to fight, man. We are in a battle zone. People don't know. People are asleep, man. Whew. So, I'm sorry, guys. I'm on a rant. I'm real passionate about this. So the next, I don't even know what part two is going to be, but <laughs> uh, I'll have it together soon. You guys can go on the um, on the blog and we'll have, I think I'm going to throw up some of these websites that I was able to get this information in the books. So you guys can check it out, man. Study to show yourself approved. The only way you can heal is through yourself. You can't rely on anybody else. You got to put in the work. It's hard, boy, I tell you, I'm, what, 35, and it took all these years. <laughs> and I'm still working on it. Still working on it. So, all right, I love you guys. Even though, even people, I, you know, love is action, honey. You, you're able to do it. So, <laughs> um, I love you guys, and I appreciate your support, everyone that um, tuned in. I hope it's a blessing. Thanks, Duran. Yeah, I'm looking forward to part two, too. Thank you. And part three is probably going to be a lot of parts to this. There's so many different things, like I said, we could talk about. But I just want y'all to know you're worth, you are worth so much more. So much more. All the talent that's put in inside of you, it was put there for a reason. Pull it out. Let's go, you know. But I know it's not that easy, so I'm not going to. Make it like it's easy breezy, but all right, you guys. I hope you have a good night. Ooh, oh, I didn't do too bad. 32 minutes. All right, T. Yes, show your face. Every video, I'm like, um, I'm one half of um, Natam you know, Natam Newton is my <laughs> is my partner. He's like, well, where's Tamara? Duran, can you believe she don't want to get on the camera? Can you believe that? But she would talk up a storm. Can you believe that? Hi, Twyla. <laughs> all right, you guys. Love you all. And I'll see you for part two. Share the video. I'm sure to bless someone. Everything I do has nothing to do about me, but it has to do with my healing. And it has to do with others' healing. And it has to do with me walking in obedience. And it has everything to do with me wanting people to make it. So, um, don't, I'm, I will not ever put myself on the pedestal. I, wish, I will not. I'm just walking in obedience and doing what I'm supposed to do. All right, you guys. Check out. Um, I'm going to upload this video to our website. So, you guys can um, check it out, tibbetsforwomen.com. I'm going to go ahead and put it up on our Facebook page also. <laughs> All right, you guys. Love you. Have a good night. Remember, you're worth it, okay? Oh, please, Tamara. Excuses, excuses. All right. Bye, you guys. <laughs>